Okay, thanks. Uh, hey there, Jay. Um, that was uh, pretty early in the season for you to deliver one of those kind of lengthy post game addresses to your team. How would you sort of summarize what the what the message was to the squad? You know, I think more than anything else is we need to make some adjustments from a mindset standpoint. And there's a couple that I'm going to make from a, how we operate uh, standpoint. And the goal is to be better tomorrow, obviously, than we were today. Because today wasn't very good. And we'll continue with uh, that process. And got some guys that really want to do well that are, you know, pushing pretty hard right now that it's not helping them out. They're, we got to get them in a better headspace. And we talked about how we're going to do that and, um, you know, pushing them in a direction of making the choice to get there so they can be playing a lot closer to the potential than they did for the last, you know, whatever the last two innings of the game last night and then the game today. When you, when you say pushing themselves pretty hard, is, is that another way of saying they're putting too much pressure on themselves? Some guys, for sure. Yeah. Um, so if there's a common pattern to the first three games, it's uh, hitting with runners on base, runners in scoring position. You guys are under 200 batting average wise in, in both of those scenarios. Is there any sort of sense that you're getting beyond what you just mentioned? Any pattern that you've noticed in those situations? I think guys are trying to do too much and they're allowing the situation uh, to supersede their plan. And that, that's tough. That's a tough ad admission, you know, for me as a coach for how strong the, the hit plan is here and how much it is drilled in. So we're going to work on their mind um, to get them in a place where that doesn't happen. All right, Coslo, go ahead. Um, you, you, coach, you put in Quinn Flanagan in the game in the second inning. Was that the plan, uh, you know, before the game, or how did that work out? Yeah, it was, it's been the plan all week. Um, you know, Garrett had some arm soreness coming out of the fall and over Christmas break, and wasn't able to be on the same build his pitch count up track as you know the other guys that are starter, and he's obviously a starter, and and somebody we're going to rely on heavily. Um, he did not throw in any of our scrimmages. He just wasn't there yet. Um, he'd only thrown in the bullpen. I think we'd gotten him up to 40 to 45 pitches in the pen. So the, the plan was to go one time through the order, 30 pitches or whichever came first. And he got th to 31 pitches, I believe, and to two outs and two strikes in the second inning. Uh, with the bases loaded, we made the decision to go to Quinn, which I think was a good decision. And um, it was kind of the plan all week is this is what we were going to do. Was it the plan to have a number of players make their debut either with Arizona or collegiate debut today? Or, or was that just? How no, they no. We're, we're trying to find the right combination to win the game. And, um, you know, unfortunately, it's, it's a tough one to lose last night when you have the game in, in hand and let that go because it makes it a little easier to swallow a day like today where, you're going through some of those growing pains. So we just, we have to be better from a mindset standpoint. And we have to put players in situations for them to be successful. And in a couple instances, we did not do that. We will have that cleared up tomorrow from this point forward. Michael Lev, go ahead. Yeah, Ari mentioned the some of the, the guys making their debuts. A couple of freshman relievers uh, came in in that sixth inning, I think it was, and you gave up a couple hits. Is that a situation where they have to get some experience at some point and they're going to be better for it later? Yes and no. Um, yes, in the sense of we have to put somebody in the game. You know, obviously we weren't going to bring Ian or Vince back, you know, pitching two days in a row this early in the season. But we can't do that because, you know, we owe it to the player to put them in position to be successful. And if they're not ready for it or the situation, again, becomes bigger than their plan, they're going to fail. And that's what happened today. Now, I think both those guys that you're referring to are going to be very good pitchers and very good contributors. And I think what I want them to do is not waste today's failure and use that 
as a learning and teaching tool. I would like that to come not at the expense of winning. And unfortunately, that's not the case today. Now, it certainly wasn't on them. We left a lot of guys on base. We struck out way too much. And, you know, some young players on the other side of the ball are struggling with that as well. Some old players on that side of the ball are struggling with that as well. And again, we have to retool, retool their mindset and retool how we operate a little bit. And that's what we're going to do. The, uh, the shuffling of the lineup that you did today, was that mainly a product of facing a lefty or were you trying to maybe generate a spark of some sort? No, no spark. I mean, I thought, you know, we scored seven last night. We had a problem with Baker at the end of the game, obviously. Uh, we had hits. We had chances. I thought we improved from the first night. Um, it was to, to get the starter out of the game again and then get into the bullpen and then be able to match up from the rest of the game a little bit better. The problem became is we fell behind and it, it changed how a little bit of that was supposed to go. Now, when you look at, you know, where guys are at mindset right now, um, Ryan's had some good at bats, you know, Mac Bingham's had some good at bats. Um, you know, trust Jacob, obviously to, to impact the game in a lot of ways. Um, you know, Kobe, you know, has had our best ball and lead up to the season of any player on our team. Uh, Blake Paw, you know, I thought gave us a jolt last night. And so it was kind of stacking those five guys and then trying to set it up for the rest of the game. It just, we fell behind, so it didn't, it didn't work. Sure. There was more noise from your dugout or the guys who were next to the dugout during the game today. Was that something that you um, wanted to happen? Is this something that uh, the guys decided to do on their own? Um, you know, I think we want to play with energy. I think um, it's, it's definitely unique um, playing with no fans and, and whatnot. I think we wanted those guys to be more engaged into the game. And so how we're going to manage the bullpen is, is going to change a little bit. And so we'll call that a, a first step and keeping them a little bit more engaged in the game while social distancing and all that kind of stuff. Sure. Do you have your pitcher in mind for Monday? TJ Nichols is starting tomorrow. TJ Nichols. And do you know who's going for them? I have not heard. Haven't heard? Okay. Thank you. Doesn't matter. I mean, we, we got so much that we need to do better um, to even worry about the opponent right now is of no concern. All right, we've got Brandon Bossier with us. Uh, My Michael, I'll just start with you if you've got questions, and then uh, Ari will go over to you after that. So Michael, if you want to start. Yeah, hang on one second. Um, how would you summarize the the speech or, or the um, the talking to that Jay gave you guys there out, out in right field after the game? Yeah, I mean, it was very positive. Um, we're just going to keep sticking to our plan, both offensively and on the pitching side. And, um, you know, for us, it's just, you know, keep working and don't let it get to us. Just just forget about it and get to the next day. He was talking a lot about the mental game and, and made a reference to maybe some guys putting too much pressure on themselves, in, especially in those situations where there's runners on base. Are you sensing that at all when you're at bat or, or when some of your teammates are up at the plate? Yeah, I, I think for everyone who's come up in scoring position so far, um, they felt the pressure a little bit, trying to get too big in the box. Um, but I think now that we're really focused on our mental game and, you know, slowing down with runners in scoring position. And um, I think we'll be well off in, in games to come. How do you not, how do you avoid doing that? How do you not put that, put that pressure on yourself? How do you alleviate it? Yeah, I think we just, we work on it so much in practice and stuff. So I think just falling back to our um, training and practice um, really helps us as well as just sticking to our routine in the box and breathing. All right, go ahead. Uh, Ball State was known to have a few, you know, good pitchers coming into the series. How much would you attribute the slow start, especially with runners on base, to their pitching versus just a slow start for the for the team as a whole? Yeah, I would say, um, you know, their pitching is definitely pretty good. Um, you know, a lot of times we just get ourselves out. Um, you know, by trying to do too much at the plate instead of sticking to our plan. So I think we're just really going to 
continue to hammer home sticking to our approach at the plate and continue to do what we've been doing. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not scared for games to come about our, our um, offense and things like that. I think we're really solid in that aspect of the game. And, um, you know, I'm really excited for tomorrow. I feel like we're going to come out um, swinging it. Michael, we'll go back to you. Are you surprised that your team is one and two at this point? You know, um, yes, I, I think we're a really legit team. Um, you know, this is the best team I've ever played for. Um, we're obviously going to go through our hardships um, during the season. So I think, you know, we're really together as one right now. Um, we're as a unit. And um, I think we really believe that, um, you know, things are going to turn around real quickly for us. And, um, you know, we're really excited, obviously, and we're just we're not going to let the past dictate the future. Sure. Was there any kind of hangover effect at all from Saturday night's game, which was one that you guys kind of had in hand and and then got away from you? Yeah, I, I don't think so. I think we did a really good job of flushing the game. Um, you know, we came out um, good enthusiasm, enthusiasm, ready to go. So I don't think there was much hangover effect. It seemed like there was more noise from the dugout or the guys who were sitting next to the dugout. What kind of a, an impact did that yeah. have or could that have on a game if you guys are able to kind of keep that energy up? I think it's great um, for both the pitchers and the hitters on the team. Um, you know, having that energy, just hearing it in the background, it really motivates you just to want to do good for the team. And um, I think hearing that today and having a little glimpse of that was really good. What has it been like to not have fans in the stands? For us up here, like we can hear the conversations going on, like between the coaches and the umpires and some of Jay's instructions from third base. What's been the kind of the main difference, would you say, between the last three days and what you're used to? Yeah, I, I mean, I think we're really used to playing with no fans in the first place um, with all the inner squad games that we played. Um, obviously, when there's another opponent in the other dugout, it's, it's different um, not having fans to cheer you on. Um, but I think we've done a really good job adapting to it. Um, we're just falling back to what we've been doing our whole um, fall, and um, I think it's been good for us. If TJ Nichols is starting uh, tomorrow for you guys, are you excited to see him pitch in a real game? Yeah, I'm really excited. I think he has really good stuff, and I think he's going to, uh, you know, do a really good job controlling the zone and keeping the hitters off balance. Um, you know, I have all the confidence in the world in him, and um, I think we're really ready to go. Are your Kelly anything else? All right, thanks, Brandon. Thank you.